Welcome back. Now, the AI doll trend. Now, there's a new one turning pets into people. Yes. It's taking social media by storm, turning users into miniature boxed versions of themselves in the, do yes. in the dolls. Yes, but behind the phone lies a darker side. Concerns about the massive energy demands of AI servers mm. and the risks of data misuse. Here to tell us more is Digital Dynamo, Elaine Burke. <laughs> Good morning, Elaine. Oh, she likes that digital <laughs> dynamo. I, see that she, I like that. That's a good one. You so can put that on your... If people haven't seen these, they're either living under a rock or else they're not on social media, which I absolutely commend. What is this new trend, Elaine? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, people may have already seen them if they're on social media and it's these images of a person made to look like a doll. And that means like they're packaged like a doll, sometimes in a box like Barbie or in a blister pack. Um, they can be different styles of doll and we've got some versions here. Um, and it's, it's something that people can do now because one person basically creates an image like this and then shares the prompt that they used and to told the engine to generate this image and then other people try and use it themselves. And they can get mixed results. Sometimes the legs of the doll just creep out of the package inexplicably. Um, sometimes the accessories don't look quite right. But uh, there's just a lot of people trying this trend because they see they see it, want it, want a version for themselves, want a personalised version for themselves. So as you do, I think we can show um, our ones. I think my one and Alan is there anyway. So the prompt we use, can you turn this photo into an action figure in a box? Oh, that's the good. brand name Ireland AM, it actually looks the image oh, of them. It's not so yeah. good. That one's and not. Why do I? They, I like AI the outfit and me. the stance. Like, I've never seen a doll stand like that. So, again, like, it doesn't always understand what a doll would look like and how it would move and be formed. But you could make a fortune. You use, now. you use a reference image and you can see also they've got can the Can we go back to Alan? The set. <laughs> he didn't see it. Go back to Alan. And the Please. Ireland AM logo and stuff because. <laughs> It's actually the bulb off yet. Do you not think? <laughs> oh God, no. So this is these are the prompts, that and you, you use a reference in. image. So they would have used an image of yourself, Marin, and mo more than likely from the set, because you can see that the image itself is kind of pulling ideas mm. from the set yes. that we have here. And you've mentioned Ireland AM in the prompt, so it knew to include the logo of Ireland AM and the colouring in yeah. that logo. So the information in the prompt that seems like it's just a couple of words jumbled together can actually be very specific in terms of what you're telling it to oh. do. Okay, so this is great fun. Great, it's well, great fun. Yeah, but it's also not the first time we've. Seen a trend like this like people love to do kind of things of themselves like we've seen like cartoonification of people over the years like what would I look like when I was older this is before AI these are just like apps and sites could use but from my understanding this is a new development with ChatGPT that was kind of just text generating and now you can do images which has led to this yeah the ChatGPT engine uh, no longer relies on DALI which was like a separate image generation engine from OpenAI it, it, it's kind of like within ChatGPT you can now do a prompt and get an image out of it and they're just slightly higher quality image than they were before. And that's why people are, are kind of playing around with it and doing these things. Um, but you can do this with other image engines, image generation engines as well. It's not like something that only ChatGPT can do. But also I would say, if you're gonna look this up to try and do it yourself, when a trend happens, people jump on it to try and exploit people immediately. Mm. And you might see someone will have mocked up using AI, possibly a website that says, oh, here's how you get your uh, oh, AI doll. Now, I haven't seen examples of that yet, but it tends but to it happen. But it happens all like, the time. Even when Flappy Bird was a really popular game, people made clones of it to try and con people. Because once something is going to be looked up there has with to fever be and intent, like people will try and find a way to yeah. game it. Okay, so listen, these are great. I, I don't, you know, I don't get it. Wouldn't choose to spend time doing this personally, <laughs> but lots of people would, and they might think it's a bit of fun. Let's talk about the actual impact that it's having, and this is something that you are not going to be thinking about. It has a huge uh, environmental impact to create one of those images, and let's put our hands up now because obviously we did this. Yeah. What does, what does that do? What is so, it? What are you using? Yeah, so some of the research around this is it's hard to actually pin down the exact environmental impact because the companies involved often aren't telling you exactly what the energy usage is in this. But there is a researcher called Sasha Lucioni who is brilliant in this area and she actually created some technology to try and measure this. And some of her most recent research has found that to create one uh, generated image, so for image generation, it's about the same energy it would take to charge your phone, which is a lot of energy. Our phones actually, you know, they last for over a day mm -hmm. these days. Like they last a really long time and they do a lot of work. So like an entire day's charge from your phone uh, is, is the cost of that image in terms of energy impact. Um, people also have found that they've estimated that generating one 100 word piece of text, so say for an email or something yeah. like that, just 100 words would be the equivalent of like an entire water bottle in terms of its water so requirement. Is this for AI to do it via for AI? For generative AI. For yeah. generative AI. So this is sapping our resources more than say you writing your own normal email, right? Exactly. Yeah. Now, all of these things have an impact. Writing an email, doing a Google search, uh, getting a web page to be viewable on your computer from a server that's miled away. Mm. All of this has an energy impact and we've been kind of trained to never think about it. So we've been 
like sleepwalking into this for a really long time. The fact that data centers are called the cloud really removes you from the idea mm -hmm. of them having like a physical footprint. Yes. I mean, it's a really clever marketing term when you think about mm -hmm. it. But when we, and we're also kind of been trained to think of things as quite limitless when it comes to data as well, because it's, you know, in the air and it has no impact and it has no footprint. And like we expect to have storage that's limitless. We expect to have things like stored in the cloud that we never actually plan to see or use again. We've all We've all got thousands of photos stored in various servers around the world that we plan to never access again. And all of that has an impact to keep it live. And we, we should actually probably think of being more economical. Go back to like the version of TechSpeak when you had 180 characters and you had to write in a certain way to fit yes. that in there. We can be economical with data when we are restricted, but, but we we're also, not restricted. 